you'll realize that of all the rooms we've seen, in this room there is more natural light than the others. It's because this room was the exit point for all African men that had to stay in the men's dungeon. But then the exit was blocked off around 1833 when the British had abolished slave trade in all British colonies in West Africa. But originally the slave trade ended in 1807 in England. Which means illegally it still went on here in Africa. They never took the Africans to the Americas, but rather, so, to, to Europe, but rather to the Americas, sorry. And wonderful guests, what you see here is a shrine. African traditional religion. Yes. Believing in the existence of the Almighty God, worshiping Him through lesser gods, believing in the spirit, live in things of nature, so you worship the Almighty God through His creation. Yes. And this was actually here on the land. But then there came a time the chiefs found out that the Portuguese had made Elmina a city on its own and they were protecting it from the other tribes. So they wished Europeans would come and stay at their end as well. That is why when the Europeans started coming to this side, it was easy for them to give the land out to them. So the Europeans paid rent to them. They settled here. But then there came a time the shrine was made to be taken out of here. So he was taken into the town. He stayed there until around 1961. Ghana had become republic after independence in 1957. Then the chiefs came to realize that no, if the Europeans have left, we don't have to leave this thing out here. We have to take it back to its original place. So then they came back here, did all kinds of rituals, built an altar here and brought the very original stones they took our way back. And that is what we see here now. It hasn't got the original color. It's covered in blood. And the blood is not that of a human, but that of animals they sacrifice here all the time. And this is what we call the black stone. It's not, it doesn't mean the stone was already black. It's just a normal stone, but the black makes it black. It's just like what the Native Americans do before the Europeans went there to mess it all up. Well, so, under normal circumstance, we have a priest here that says prayers. He says a, a prayer, welcome the brothers and sisters to the land of the ancestors, say very good things to them, but then today he's not around at the moment. But then... Sorry? Okay, so please, you pour the libation. Uh, as, as all of you know by now, my libation is always from a Yoruba perspective because okay. that's the one that I know. And the libation that I'm going to do is the one that I did at the last step. We're going to do the um, invocation to our, in, in Yoruba, it's a gung gung. We refer to our ancestors as, as a gung gung. And it's important to remember that when we are when we are invoking our igungun that we have the full power of all of our igungun all the way back to the first ancestor. So it's not just like our immediate family and so forth. We bring all of that power forth when we, um, when we invoke. And a little more about the uh, exact words and what they mean. And uh, we're asking for our male ancestors to come be with us, our female ancestors to come be with us. We're acknowledging that we cannot see them, but we know when we say this chant to them that they are among us, and then we're happy. It starts talking about we dance, we're dancing with you, mother, we're dancing with you, father. Our life is as sweet as honey as we know that you're with us and we celebrate with you. So that's the, the meaning of it. Got my back up. <laughs> oh. Oh, brother Kwame, if you can just give everyone a uh, candle, and then uh, once it's lit, uh, we can even okay. eventually put them around the area. All right.